Great. So let's talk about logging. Okay. Uh, when you do log on, uh, on on your on your app, you need to consider a few things. Okay. The first one is that logging is one of the worst um, offender in your whole application. It's not neutral. It has cost a lot of uh, effort, disk space, CPU space. And more importantly, is a complete side effect of your uh, application doing its job. Okay. Imagine that, you know, have you ever, have anybody told you do not write any functions that have side effects? Okay. That does, this should be in every programming manual at this point, right? Well, logging is a side effect of your function calling. Okay. So, okay. So you have your function, your, your route, whatever that is called, and that, that function gives you uh, a log something, okay? Um, and, you know, something like, um, and something like that, like it does, does just plug something somewhere, okay? And tuck. Well, what if it's called a lot, okay? Then you got into, you can get into trouble real quick because, you know, it's, uh, um, you're logging, you know, you start having some questions of, um, should my application fail? if it cannot log, okay? This is a question, it's an important one, okay? Are my logs more important than the serving the users, okay? Can I lose some logs? Are the logs best effort? Okay, this is the first question. The second question is, if my application crashes, look at this, can uh, I lose some logs, okay? And the third one, which is even, even worse to some extent, it's if my um, if my application is logging too much, okay, and this we are going to talk about this in a second, for the destination to, to be written on, should we lose uh, any um, should we lose any logs? What? Sorry, what do you mean? Yes. Okay. So imagine this case: you are receiving a lot of traffic, okay, and you're logging to desk or you're logging to network, okay. Now. Your application produces way more logs than uh, what the destination can can um, can handle. So at some point, those log lines will start filling up in your process, or not. Depends on how you want to handle them. So there are a few ways to handle that case. So the first one is you log, you accumulate the logs in uh, um, in your process, waiting for them to for the destination to be available, and then you flush as soon as they are ready. These are the side effect that if my application crashes, um, I lose log lines, but at least it, they will get there eventually. However, it can also cause an out of memory error because if the destination is, if, you, if the rate of logs is keep being so high, at some point the RAM will be full and then you will be in huge trouble. Now, the second thing to be done with logs is, um, and, and so you have these trade-offs to, to consider, okay? Like this a big trade-off, a few good trade-offs there. And you can, so the, the nice good thing about logs is that you can uh, do those, all those trade-offs with, uh, with Pino, okay? Like, um, let's talk a little bit about Pino. So Pino, you go to getpino.io, and now I also have getpino.dev and I will need to move it. Anyway, well, I need also to fix it, maybe, whatever. A lot of work. Um, so, how is Pino? Uh, Pino, you create your logger and you log. By default, Pino is asynchronous. So, what does it mean? It means that it waits until the it, it if the destination is busy, it accumulates it and then flush them out when it has time. Okay. You can also configure it to be fully synchronous. In that way, it will stop until the destination is available. How do you do that? Okay. So let, let, let's, let's look at it. Okay. So we have Pino and let's do example.js and we do const Pino require Pino and we create the logger and we do logger.info hello world node example and you see this prints some good stuff okay now also first thing to consider here what we are doing we are logging in 
new line delimited JSON. Okay, this is very important. Um, why we are logging in new line delimited JSON, which is a JSON followed by new line. Okay, not, nothing fancy. Because uh, we want inspectable, easy logs that are very easy to process. Okay. Uh, otherwise, we need to we will need to recognize what is the log, what are the parameters, take a look at, use cut and crap and all those tools to to to. Uh, not really not nice. Okay, to do. So this is the first thing. Now this it's uh, this is actually um, completely asynchronous. Okay. And in fact, you can even do something more magic if you want it to do. If you want to do uh, something more more nice and easier to read, you can use Pinot Pretty to get it a better feeling for it. Okay. Um, however, if you want to do uh, synchronous logging, you can do. You can just create a different stream called uh, a, a different destination, and you go. You create a destination and. And you do sync true, and we we write to standard output. It works exactly the same thing as before, but in this case, it's actually synchronous. Okay. How can we know the difference? Well, let's let's try something. Oh. So, in one case here. So you do here, you see it logs all the things, okay? If I comment this out, well, sorry, I made a mistake here. I need to pass the string here. Okay. Here, it's very quick, okay? And if I do false, it's also very quick, okay? The major difference is that if I do uh, A while true loop at the end here. Okay. First, I do all those logs, okay? Okay. Now, you see this? This is synchronous false. It log only logs the first line because then the event loop is blocked. And if I flip this to. Uh, If I sync, flip this to sync through. Oh, it still doesn't do it because I made a mistake. Wait a second. Forgot the API. Destination. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dust. Okay. okay. If I do sync one, you can see that it logs everything. If I do sync false, you can see that it doesn't. Okay, this is the difference between synchronous logging and asynchronous logging. Okay, um, asynchronous logging is of course more performant because it allows you to buffer things in memory, and then you but then you have a problem, right? What do you do when? Uh, um, what do you do when you do the other bits? Okay, when what you do when you need to send um, w when you run out of memory? Okay, well we have a few things in in um, in uh, in here, which is the Sonic the options of Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom is this library that I created to to deal with this kind of problems. It's um, it's a lot of it has a lot of things. Okay, now it has a, it has this retry EA again. Okay, function. Now EA again. This is an error code. Okay, if we look at this error code, it's um, it says that resource temporary unavailable, which does mean means that the resource will become available later on. Okay. However, this is actually very tricky because this, you know, it tells the disk is full, it's, it's, it's be very busy, cannot write anymore, but you can retry in the future. Now, by default, this will accumulate, okay? But it will, um, it allows even you to tell that, you know, you don't want to retry. 
So if the disk is busy or whatever destination, the destination is busy, you are not retrying it. And therefore you uh, are losing log messages, yes, but on the other end, and this is the good news, it's your application will not crash. And this is amazing. I want to uh, thank um, Mary Marchini for implementing this. This is her, uh, her doing. And it, she did an amazing job here. It's, you know, it's fantastic. And this saves a lot. It's actually very powerful. So, yeah, I just wanted to say. By the way, this library is actually way, way faster than doing things with core and doing standard process.td out or console log. It's way, way better. So, um, anyway, I just wanted to note this is Pino. There's also the concept of transport. Now, transports are more expensive, but you know, still fast enough. So if you want, instead of, of doing that, you want to do a fancy transport thingy, what you could do is, we could do something like transport, and here we do a, a target, which is Pinot Pretty, which will give us a fancy log lines like before. So if you run an example, oh, no, I made a mistake. No, yeah. Target. This is, sorry, I need to do that. You know, so it, because uh, it's a transport, it, it's, always a, it's always asynchronous. And as you can see here, this is, it logs all the things with Pinot Pretty. And um, yeah, it's great. Um, works great. Um, there is also a way to do transport synchronously, but I don't think I put in the option, to be honest. Doesn't make much sense. Anyway, um, however, you know, you don't want to really to do Pinot Pretty in production. So what, uh, what you can do, okay, and this is my recommendation, it's, uh, uh, so you do let Pinot opt, and then you do if process std out is tty, which means that there is a user on the other side. You do pino opt dot transport and you set this out. And then you can do that when you are doing this. But if you are um, writing to standard output, uh, writing to a file, you can see that it's 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 you know very, very important stuff um, uh, written as new light that limited JSON. Note uh, a few more interesting thing here. If I'm doing node example out, it takes literally 0 0.19 seconds. Very easy, okay? If I do time node example, and you see that it stops from time to time, it's because of the uh, uh, I term two, my, my terminal interpreter plus Tmax and so on, takes a little bit of time to render, so it stops for a bit. It takes significantly more time. Okay, um, this I think recaps uh, all the things that uh, regards to uh, production logging. Okay, uh, by the way, Pino is the default logger of Fastify, so you should be able to use um, Pino everywhere, which is great. And um, also, just important to say, uh, you know, you want the same uh, errors and all the things to go in to the same log file so that is easy to process and so on and so forth. So, yeah. Great. Um, hopefully this is a good, uh, uh, a good outcome uh, here. Cool. Um, And um, yeah, locking is very hard. Locking is very, very hard.